Um, so today I'm going to introduce you to the concept of cryptic crosswords, my favorite pastime. Um, so the end goals of this lesson are in the context of crossword puzzles, we're going to learn um, to tell cryptic clues from straight or quick clues that you are probably used to and identify some basic types of cryptic clues and in the end, uh, try to create your own cryptic clues. Now, before we get into that, does anyone know the difference between these two kinds of crossword puzzle grids? Can anybody see any differences? Fun seems way more complicated. Uh huh. Like many more squares and like relationships among the words. Very good. More squares, more wide squares. That's right. Mm -hmm. Any? Do you know? That's that's great. These are good differences that you notice. Do you know the difference? Also, uh, there's like a plus sign kind of structure and. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's actually very perceptive. <laughs> okay, let me, let me move on. So um, those, are, those are grid designs. Um, the, the one on the left is the British style grid that you would see frequently in British newspapers such as the Guardian, the Times, or even Commonwealth newspapers such as the Hindu in India. And on the right is uh, an American style grid that you would see uh, in the New York Times or expect to see in your favorite in-flight magazine. And more importantly, on the left, the answers are given by uh, cryptic clues. On the right, are the, the answers are given by what are known as quick or straight clues. Okay, let's understand what this means. Suppose um, the answer to a clue was Madrid. In the New York Times, I could expect the clue to be Spanish capital, six letters, or Spanish town, or capital of Spain, six letters. Right? That's a straight clue. But a cryptic clue would look like this. Insane, purge Spanish capital, six letters. Now, before I explain, could you figure out why the clue looks like this? Why, what's going on here? Any guesses? Well, insane and purge would be like mad and rid. You said it, absolutely, yes. Okay. That, by figuring that out, you kind of already figured out the rule for making cryptic crosswords, cryptic crossword clues. Because on a, in a straight clue, the rule is that the clue must contain nothing but a definition or a synonym of the answer, right? Whereas in a cryptic clue, the clue must contain a definition or a synonym for sure, because you need to know what the clue is about. But the clue must also contain instructions to build the answer. And there's a third rule, which is my favorite. The clue should contain nothing else but these two things, okay? And by figuring out the, this example, uh, we also see another nice bylaw uh, for making cryptic clues, which is that you ignore all punctuation in the clue uh, because punctuation means nothing in cryptic process. Okay. Um, now, this uh, is analogous, entirely analogous to say a do it yourself manual like an IKEA, IKEA manual. Because in the manual uh, where you want to build some furniture, you need a definition or you need a synonym, sorry, you need a picture of what you're actually going to do, right? But you also need instructions uh, to build the answer. And finally, you don't want anything else to be in the manual because it's just confusing. So to give a fair clue, you need just the instructions and the definition. Now to take this analogy deeper, there's yet another common sense bylaw that you could throw into these rules which is that in a manual, you want to put all the instructions in one place, right? You want to show the final picture either in the beginning or in the end, uh, and then put all the, all, all the instructions uh, in another place. If you put the final picture somewhere in the middle of the instructions, it doesn't make any sense. So to take this analogy to a clue, the answer Madrid, you could get it from insane purge Spanish capital, which is fine. Spanish capital, insane purge, but insane Spanish capital purge doesn't make any sense, right? You can't have the definition somewhere in the middle of your instructions. Okay. Now that brings us to the various types of clues. And I'm going to be talking only about a few favorite ones of mine. Um, and the types of clues are nothing but different ways in which you could give instructions uh, to build the word that is given by your definition. The first type, which you've already encountered, is a charade, right? If you think about it, what we did was nothing but a charade. You took 
insane. The, the, the most common synonym for that is mad. You take purge, it's red, you put them together, you get mad red. To give another example, dropping evil emperor, seven letters. Can you guess what the answer for this is? And to make your life easier, I've underlined the definition. You could solve that as a straight game. I know it's a little hard. <laughs> I came up with this last night. Okay. Oh, so, so dropping is, we're looking for a synonym of dropping. For dropping, exactly. Evil emperor are the, the instructions. instructions. Yeah, it's a charade. Mm. For lack of time, I'm going to move on. The answer is sinking. Because, uh. yeah, the evil is sin, emperor is king. You put them together, you get sinking. Now, yet another way to construct a clue is to give some words and delete uh, some letters from it. Okay, the deletion clue. Here in this example, we have wild trip doesn't end in Spanish town. Spanish town is Madrid. Wild trip is mad ride. Doesn't end is part of the instructions. It's an indicator. It tells you that mad ride doesn't end. So if doesn't end, it's mad red. That is you remove the last letter and you end up with Spanish town. Okay. Mm. So okay. yet, yet, so, so the instructions again contains, tells you exactly what to do. It says doesn't end. Similarly, radical beheaded beast, three letters. To make, can you, can you guess the, to make your life easier, radical is the synonym. And think of chemistry. <laughs> beheaded is the instruction. Uh, e. Yeah, you're, you're almost there. Yeah, you got it. I don't know. Wild beast. I was. I, I could. I could have turned it into a wild beast. I mean, okay. you're a from beast or something. I, oh, okay. So oh, beheaded. Oh, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. Okay. You remove the first letter is what beheaded indicates in this case. Um, and yet another kind um, would be to hide the word in the clue itself. In this case, nomad rider, very Spanish capital. Um, here, the word berries, uh, this is something that you need to get practice on. But if you look at the word berries, it indicates that the answer is already buried in the clue. So what mm -hmm. I mean by that is mad red is actually buried in the clue. And in the second example, I have state in which lava pours out. Uh, it's not what you think. It's not molten. It's not liquid. Uh, turns out the answer is vapor. State is the uh, definition. Uh, and vapor is sitting right in the clue. And the way you see that is uh, in is the indicator that shows you that the answer is in the phrase that follows. Okay, so mm -hmm. I know this takes a little practice to get used to. Um, and that's why I arranged an activity for you. Um, so one take home activity would be to go to the Guardian or go to your favorite British newspaper, look at all the answers, look at all the clues and try to pass the clues yourselves. And one final activity I've arranged for you is to take your pen and paper, look at the three words on the left, button, aunt, green, pick one or two of these, and maybe take 60 seconds to um, create your own clue uh, uh, using um, uh, one of the three clue types that you just learned, whichever, whichever it is that you learned best. <laughs> Just pick one, make a clue, and if you have time, type it into Zoom or just shout it out at me. So, okay, um, I've come to the end of my lesson. We've learned the difference between straight clues uh, and cryptic clues, um, and we learned some basic types, uh, 